From the monotone delivery to the outfits and the flags on stage, it's exactly like watching a press conference from China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Except this one is produced in Taiwan by comedians for a satirical show on YouTube called ICTV. When we established the channel, we wanted to use a less serious way to explore politics. We imitate CCTV, China's state TV channel, and how they report the news. Our most popular segment is the press conferences held by China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I play the part of a Chinese official. The questions are very satirical, for example, about China's internet restrictions or how they manage the pandemic. Irony not only makes people realize that certain things China says are nonsense, it also makes them examine and question it. ICTV reflects Taiwanese people's dissatisfaction with China's involvement in Taiwan over the past few years. Their style is mockumentary news. They pretend to be an official state media news broadcast. But in addition to comedy, ICTV actually provides a lot of news. Many young Taiwanese don't know much about China's politics, even though it significantly impacts Taiwan. So the show conveys at least some kind of information about the current political climate to young audiences. ICTV does not just take aim at Chinese officials or China's Communist Party. Some of its satire targets politicians and politics closer to home. In particular, Taiwan's opposition party, the Kuomintang, or KMT, and the bizarreness of the country's political status quo. In the country's constitution, which was written more than 75 years ago, Taiwan is still called the Republic of China which lays claim to all Chinese territory, including the mainland. It's a legacy of the pre-1949 era, when the KMT ruled China, before the civil war saw them defeated by the Communist Party and forced into exile in Taiwan. For decades, the KMT and the Communist Party both claimed control over each other's territory and argued that theirs was the only legitimate China. It's a strange reality, one that Beijing still asserts and remains reflected in Taiwan's constitution, and it's at the heart of ICTV's comedy. We pretend to be the state media in Taiwan which aims to brainwash everyone into believing Taiwan's Republic of China is the only real China. We ridicule the political status quo. Most young Taiwanese find the situation bizarre and funny, but there are older people from different generations who feel sad about it and have other views on the Republic of China. I would say that before ICTV became really popular, a lot of the young people didn't know that in our constitution we still try to claim back the territory. It wasn't aware because people just don't talk about it. And now because the power of comedy, people know it. it's like, come on, KMT, you probably need to fix your constitution or we need to face our history together. Taiwan's situation is just very surreal. While our constitution claims that our territory covers the whole of China, Everyone knows that Taiwan is being bullied by Beijing and could never govern mainland China. The same goes for the other side. The Communist Party has always claimed that Taiwan is a part of the People's Republic of China, which is equally ridiculous. It's all so stupid, but also very sad. ICTV are very effective at using sharp black humor to address these territorial matters. It's a funny and satirical way of addressing the truth. ICTV's YouTube page has more than a million subscribers. 
And they are not the only comedians ratcheting up views. Political satire, with its irreverent take on Taiwan's identity and constitution, has struck a chord with young audiences. Take Brian Tseng, who launched Taiwan's first satirical talk show in 2018. He used much of his airtime to joke about his favorite topic, China. So then there are the new kids on the block, podcast hosts like Kylie Wang, who uses her show to reach Chinese-speaking audiences in Taiwan and beyond. We try to reach uh, all the Mandarin-speaking people around the world, like Singapore, Malaysia, not to mention like Hong Kong and China. Our podcast show has a lot of Chinese listeners who secretly support what we say, but they can't really say it. The reason why we know is because some of them send us emails anonymously and tell us how lonely they are because they can't really share what they really think in their own country. Unlike China, Taiwan has one of the freest media scenes in Asia. It's been that way since the 1990s, after the country emerged from decades of Kuomintang dictatorship. But the information space is very polarized, and a significant share of news outlets are indirectly controlled by Beijing. With an economy that greatly depends on China, Taiwanese media organizations that criticize the Communist Party can face commercial pressures. Platforms like YouTube and Spotify offer comedians a space to say and produce what they want without having to take any of that into account. YouTube as a platform is very important to us. Using YouTube and to a lesser degree Facebook means that we can criticize China without facing threats or commercial pressures. That's not to say that mainstream news outlets in Taiwan don't take a stance. Some of them do address China's propaganda and politics. There is pushback. Our selling point is that we turn China's propaganda into a joke, to blunt the power of propaganda. Much of the mainstream media that was resisting China's communist government has either been bought or disappeared. If you want to establish a political satire program like ICTV on a TV station, you face funding and personnel issues. So these shows rely on YouTube. But they still need to be careful because China is also infiltrating this space. It's just another tactic of theirs. Despite all the jokes, not all ICTV content is a laughing matter. With stories like Hong Kong's protests or the war in Ukraine, the show takes a less comedic, more journalistic approach, with correspondents even flying out to report the situation from the ground. For Chen Se Chen, it's about the balance between satire and solemnity. We have one principle when we make the show. If we're going to talk about a sensitive story, or one that involves a lot of casualties, we're going to approach it in a serious, more cautious way. For example, the war in Ukraine, where we have sent a reporter to cover it. I don't think our channel will become an official, serious news channel. After all, our audiences watch us for fun and for satire. But we might at some point develop another channel that has a different mission. What's really interesting is that when Taiwanese comedians try to do comedy or political satire, people would tend to think that, OK, you guys are anti-China. But we are not. A lot of people, they just haven't understood that yet. So we are trying our best to reach more people, to make them understand what we are doing. And we are just protecting our society and our country. And I'm sure that this is something that they will appreciate as well. Uh, fire, fire. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more media analysis on the U.S., Taiwan, China, or anywhere across the globe, we have plenty to offer. Just click here.